Greetings, welcome to another day of Auto Forge development. Before I get into it, I just wanted to ask uh, for feedback on these daily recap videos, if you've been watching them. I'd like to know if they're, you know, interesting, too long, too short, too much detail, you know, too much jargon. And, um, you know, am I going into the inner workings of the code too much or not enough? Um, if you can, you know, post in the comments below and just let me know uh, what you think of these. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you can also join my Twitch channel and give me feedback there. I really appreciate it. Even if um, you think they're perfect, just say, you know, they're perfect. Let me know, um, you know, just... A little bit of feedback here. I appreciate it. But anyways, uh, so we were working on getting the prefab system completely revamped. I talked about that yesterday, yesterday a little bit where we were changing our prefabs to be a much simpler solution instead of having... Um, I won't even go into the details. They're, they're just very complicated, you know, lots of moving parts. There's a lot of assumptions um, being made about the state of the game engine when the script would be loaded. And also we just didn't have teal support uh, in the prefab scripts. So I wanted to kind of just like simplify things and also get uh, teal working in our prefab scripts. So, set about doing that. What we landed on is simplifying the prefab system to where prefabs are simply entities. Prefab entity, exact, exactly the same thing. Uh, prefab entities will always have a prefab component, which will contain the prefab key that that entity you know is corresponding to and whenever we have developer mode turned on that prefab component will actually be copied over to other uh entities you know the instances of that prefab and so it's really simple all we have is this prefab that has a static git function that we can pass in a hash string uh, and I also added in support, which we can see right over um, in here. I added in support so the engine will allow us to um, <clears throat> convert a string to a hash string, and that's through like Sol Lua customizations. And so if we just say, hey, I want a pudding string, it will convert it into a hash string for us. Nice. Um, and we, we can see an example of that exact same thing that I'm talking about over in the main script. Right here, we say entity manager create, and this will, this is kind of a shortcut for getting the, like this ends up calling prefab uh, git. And when we pass in the, um, the key for it and it gets it and creates an instance of that entity for us. So yeah, um, that's kind of the the system. And I, I talked about a lot of this yesterday, so sorry if there's some repeat here. Um, we, we're just like kind of cleaning things up and trying to get it to a point where it was working. And that was the big question yesterday, right? Was it working? Hold on just one moment. <laughs> So we also worked on um, the physics side of things and just really trying to make all of this work and uh, look nice on the prefab. So this is an actual prefab script, which is a teal file. So we have type checking here, which is wonderful. And we create an entity and then we actually will uh, return it at the end of the script, which makes this a uh, very open to other tooling where if uh, we wanted to try, um, you know, checking our entities for like what uh, components we are using and where we're using them and just like make a script that imports or requires all of our 
prefabs, we can do that very easily without having to go through the game engine and like loading up all the prefabs because there's no like assumed state of things when we run this script. And there's some cool like stuff happening behind the scenes that I kind of have talked about before, um, such as we have a component defined in Lua or Teal that we return here. And that's actually being loaded up by the engine right before we do our load up our scripts. And it will generate a um, factory function for that uh, component that allows us to be able to add it. So it like actually creates a function. It's just a lambda here. Um, and I even made it so that it's overloaded. So you can optionally pass in data to it or not. And then <clears throat> all we have to do is, uh, you know, all the add location function, which we have an example of right here, and we can add the location very easily. So yeah, the question is, does this work? My answer is yes. After some amount of time, we actually did get it working. So this is using both our tile prefab. We saw that little pudding fall down. That's all going through this new prefab system, which is beautiful. And yeah, so I'm excited about that. That actually wraps up all of these changes that we have been working on with the prefab system. We're going to just keep moving forward. Uh, next up is going to be, I believe, the UI scripts and getting those to work with teal as well. And that should be the last like bit of converting our engine to support teal nicely. So yeah, thanks for watching. Again, if you can post feedback, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.